This is John Martinka with the Getting the Deal Done podcast series. And my special guest today from the Twin Cities in Minnesota is Todd Eberhardt. Todd is the owner of Dynasty Leadership, uh, DynastyLC.com. He is a serial entrepreneur, and he will tell us a little bit about the business he's owned. And right now is a CEO coach and strategic planner. And he has a unique target market. And he will tell us why he has uh, picked that, but he, he likes to work with CEOs in their first three years and last three years of owning the business. Uh, he also runs the Dynasty Leadership podcast series, which is available on iTunes and his website. Welcome, Todd. Thanks, John. I appreciate you having me on. So let's start with uh, your little bit of business ownership. What did you, what kind of companies did you own? Yeah, so so Dynasty, um, the coaching and consulting company that I run now, it's my sixth. Uh, the ones that I had uh, uh, co-founded prior to that, the five previous ones, had all really been in the technology realm. Not not the sexy kind of technology that gets you on the front page of Inc. Magazine, but the one that keeps the businesses running. So all the back office stuff and things like that. Uh, so. We learned a lot. Um, there's a lot of lessons. I mean, probably not as many through the victories. The businesses did well, but you know, you pick up new things along the way from a lot of different smart people. And so I learned each time as I went. I've, I've sold to uh, private equity. I have sold to my leadership teams. I've had to blow one of the businesses up because it wasn't working. So a few different looks at it. Okay. Why the first and last three years of someone's ownership? So. As, uh, as I was having conversations with the CEOs, and it really came back to, to one of the businesses that I ran with a team, where we got to go out and interview 7,000 business owners um, all across the country. And it was this amazing backstage pass and learning about what makes businesses tick and when are they in their most pivotal moments. And what I learned where I had the most value, at least for me, is in those first three years, so a, a new CEO from a thriving existing business that's up and running, they need to jump in real fast and get up to speed. Um, if the employees are kind and the handoff went well, they'll give them as much as six months where they're going to wait and watch and withhold judgment. But if it's a tumultuous time and the business times are rocky, they, they may start to change their mind on what they want to be doing within that business. So the CEOs in those first three years really have to get up and running and, and grow into that role very quickly. So those first three years are important. The last three years, you know, it is somebody that's quite often taking decades worth of their own work. You know, they put their heart and soul into a business. A lot of the ones that, that you look for, you know, when you're helping your clients, a lot of the ones you've represented, right? All these entrepreneurial businesses, and in those last few years is when you're really trying to get the business professionalized. You know, in fact, in your book, you make a really good point about uh, delegating yourself, not being so intimate that the business can't function without you. And I do spend a lot of time helping them delegate those things off and professionalize it. And those last three years is when it's going to be most important so that someone else is going to find value in what you've got. So first three years, last three years, that's where I'll spend all my time. Okay. So the CEOs, owners of these businesses, you know, what type of person, type of CEO wants a coach like you? So if you think about it, there's so many uh, that have started to go pro. I mean, the big ones that we think about, Steve Jobs or... Um, you know, any of the other leaders from big companies, whether they talk about it openly or not, they all had great business coaches that helped them get through some tough times. And in especially in Twin Cities and beyond, um, it's a real entrepreneurial group. And so in that, that world, you know, these type of people, quite frankly, are the ones that I would say are the ones that are always studying. They're always looking to improve themselves versus, uh, what I would call a rugged individualist, the one that wants to kind of go off in a corner, figure things out themselves. And they'll, they'll probably get their advice from the same place that where they watch cat videos, right? So they, you know, 
it's a different group. I, I like the GoPro group that's out actively looking for a coach that has been there before that can show them a few new ways to do things. Uh, my, my coaches, in fact, so as I kind of look through the process, I tend to look for some very specific things. I look for CEOs that have had success with outside coaches or consultants before, because that really uh, lends itself to wanting to work further with people like me. Uh, my CEOs typically are still close to their clients. They still like that getting in on the deal. They still like being able to know who their best clients are. And in fact, even some smaller things. My clients are more likely to own a four-door car than a two-door Corvette. They're, they're more likely to own uh, an iPhone than an Android. Uh, you know, just some small things that you get to know about who they are and, and what tendencies they have that, that helps me understand, is this going to be a fit where I can add value? Okay. So there's a pretty well-known book called The Tipping Point. Mm -hmm. What's the tipping point that gets one of these CEOs uh, to, to reach out to you or uh, accept a referral someone has given to you, et cetera? Yeah, that's a great reference to a great book. Uh, yeah, there's, there's always a tipping point. And in my world, I, I think about what would be a timing trigger. Same thing as a tipping point. What's going on in their world? Sometimes they come out early and they just know right away. I want to get started right away and I want a coach that's going to help me get there quicker. Quite often what I end up with is somebody that has hit a speed bump, if you will, right? They come in with a game plan. Here's what we want to accomplish. But then they lose a key account or their, their stud salesman takes off or they start having a rub with their board of directors or maybe a partner starts to change their mind on how they want to run the business. And all of a sudden things are off kilter. More often than not, it's something that if you think about it, and I simplify it, something to have to do with people and communication. Those are usually the things that come up most often that people tend to struggle with. Uh, and that's usually when I'll get a call from one of their trusted advisors and said, Hey, you should talk to Steve or you should talk to Renee and, and I'll set that up for you. So that's usually what happens. Okay. Let's shift a little bit on your website. You have what you call, uh, is it the dynasty catapult? Yeah, absolutely. What's the catapult? So the catapult is the idea of when we're going through strategic planning, uh, quite often the businesses that I'm working with, they see a bigger future for themselves, but it's one that they've never been there before. They've never run a bigger business than where they are today. So when we take them through this catapult, it's talking about what does a bigger business look like, feel like, how does it operate? What resources do we need? And I, I walk them down this path. And together we collectively talk about what does that look like in the future? And then we unwind it to say, okay, well, how do we take that bigger business on a much bigger scale? A 5X scale is what we work with. So grow five times in five years. If you're you know, a $10 million business today, we're talking about what does $50 million look like in five years? And the business has to fundamentally change. If, if you grow, you know, companies will say, talk about doubling in size. You could double the size of your business just through brute force, really just working harder, driving the people harder, longer hours. The problem is it doesn't stick. You know, people burn out. It's not as much fun. And so we talk about something that you're really taking a quantum leap forward that you fundamentally have to change the business. And so that becomes the catapult part, launching it uh, five times into the future at five times the size. Yeah, I noticed that on your website. So I want to share a short story that ties into that. Sure. But a business buyer, very unrealistic business buyer, who said, I want to buy a company and I want to pay off the 10 year uh, acquisition loan in five years. And I said, okay, well, that means you about pretty much have to at least triple the business in five years to have the cash flow. Sure. And yeah. so, you know, you realize that's going to take something. And he says, oh, no, I want, to, I want every, every last bit of earnings to go to paying down the debt. I said, you're not going to invest in any more people, any more equipment, any more marketing, et cetera. He says, nope, can't do it. So <laughs> I lead that is that's unrealistic. What does it take people-wise, money-wise, marketing-wise to do that in your, in, in your, from your experiences? 
That's a great question. And, and, and to your point, yeah, you can't just grind it down to something where, you know, these unrealistic expectations, sometimes people have to be careful what they wish for, right? Because as you paint this picture of a bigger 5X company, you're talking about a bigger leadership team, a bigger management team. And, and the point you made is really good, which is a growing business is super cash hungry. How are we going to make that happen? So you have all these dreams and things, but what does that look financially? You know, are you going to feed that through your own pocket, right? Through your own resources? Are you going to go out and get partners? Are you going to do financing through the bank? All these things, you know, you got to figure out before you can just start throwing money at something or talking about what that looks like. And, you know, people have different visions of what that looks like. Sometimes they just want organic growth. Sometimes they want to do an acquisition because that sounds fun. Uh, you and I both know there's a lot more to it than that. And they don't always work out as well as people had, had thought. So, there's just a million things to think through in going through those pieces. One of the biggest things that they come up against is that leadership team, the good buddies that they have around them were good to get them to this point. Are those people equally invested in a bigger future and, you know, the learning and education and growth and training and delegation that they'll have to go through to see that bigger future through. So we do spend a lot of time on that. Okay. Is there a uh, m specific market you go after, type of business, size of business, location of business? Yeah, I do. I do tend to focus on businesses that are, are large enough to have their own leadership team. So really the smallest, the very smallest would be a $10 million business with 50 people. But more than likely, you're probably talking a $25, $50 million business. Most of my clients have come from the B2B world. Uh, broad spectrum of technology, shipping, logistics, healthcare, all kinds of different things, but that B2B space, because they typically have a sales force and, and those type of things are where I've, I've been able to add value. Um, and it's always a relationship with the CEO. I mean, because it's so strategic in nature, um, they're the ones that have the vision that we want to be able to follow through on. Okay. So you pick these companies you're working with, and or even smaller when should they consider an advisory board and then even a formal board of directors where they are paying people so the advisory board i would say as soon as possible right there, there's no business that's too small not to have a trusted group of advisors that have given you good direction so if you, if you think about it this way i've, I've always thought about what are the things that it would take to be a good advisor? One, they have to understand, you know, your business enough to be able to do it. But two, they also need to be able to give perspective that, uh, let's just say you want to branch out uh, internationally. And so you'd want to have somebody within that group that understands what that looks like or any kind of things that they're taking on uh, in the future. So you'd want some advisors that have that capacity. Realistically, um, you'd want them to be in a place where you'd like to be, you know, you'd like them to be further ahead where this is where I'd like to be in the next few years. You'd want them to be comfortable with sharing their stories about both the good and the bad, telling you about, you know, where they've had success. Everybody loves a good victory lap, but also being honest about where they've fallen short, where they've stumbled, because that's a really good test to see, is this somebody I can trust? Okay. So I've got, one more question. You may have some other things you would like to share. Sure. So how do you work with people? I know we've used the, uh, the word coach. Um, do you do project work also? Uh, do you do, I get what I, I, I know as, as retainer work where someone, you know, someone pays you a certain amount of money every month, whether they call you or not, uh, versus yeah. coach being more proactive. How do you, structure your engagements for, for people. So it's, there's two simple pieces to it. So when I'm doing CEO and executive coaching, it's really kind of working with both the CEO and their team um, throughout the course of a month. I do that on a retainer basis because it just makes it easier for us to be able to pick up the phone and talk to each other, can schedule a bunch of different meetings and calls and everybody understands what's involved. Yeah. And so I'll do a month retainer when I'm doing the coaching um, for the strategic planning and, and things that tie into that, uh, I'll attach a daily fee to it so everybody understands, you know, 
most planning you'll do day by day. Um, if it's annual strategic planning, usually that takes about two days with a decent sized company because you have a lot of people reporting in a lot of financials to get through and a lot of forward looking pieces we're going to have to make decisions on. And then when we're doing quarterly, we'll do those typically in a single day. And uh, then we'll be able to get a good recap, uh, reset our goals okay. as well as moving forward. Okay. And you work nationally? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Internationally? Yeah. Uh, I've done some in Canada. I've had private equity companies ask me to help in Canada, which has worked out well. And that's that's been about as far as I've taken it so far. Okay. Any final thoughts you'd like to get out? Well, you know, I appreciate you having me on. And and I will say, I'm going to give you another plug for your book. I, I think getting the deal done, and we did a podcast together on it. I think it's a fantastic book. And it gives a ton of things that tie right into my coaching, the idea of delegation, the idea of how do you make the business professionalized? All those things are what we spend a ton of time on. So you did a fantastic job with the book. And uh, I, I'm going to be recommending it to my clients as well. I appreciate the compliment. Uh, Todd Eberhardt, uh, Dynasty Leadership out of the Twin Cities. You can reach him at Todd at DynastyLC.com. On the website, you can get some other information and uh, get links for his podcast series, which is also on iTunes, and I'm sure on all the other major uh, podcast platforms, right? Right. Okay. Well, Todd, Absolutely. thank you very much for joining me today. And I look forward to continuing our relationship. Thanks very much for having me, John. I appreciate it. All right.